M drive enabling a better future. This is just the intro M drive electromagnetic drive. What is it? Where did it come from? How does it work? What can it do? What happens next? So, well, <clears throat> first of all, what is it? Well, essentially, it is a propellantless thruster. Now, a conventional rocket um, uh, achieves acceleration by expelling uh, a mass uh, in one direction. Um, and the laws of momentum conservation means that the rocket will then accelerate in the other direction. What the M drive thruster does is to produce a force, um, which we call the thrust, in one direction. Um, uh, this is a force that you can measure if you put your sort of hand against the, 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 the end plate that's producing the thrust, you'll feel it pushing against you. Um, and as with all machines um, that uh, follow Newton's principles, uh, it will therefore accelerate in the opposite direction. So this is not a reactionless thruster, because those things just don't exist outside of science fiction, but it is a propellantless thruster. In fact, it's the world's first propellant-free propulsion system. Uh, we originally developed it for spacecraft propulsion, and um, uh, the public domain, if you like, now recognises that there are two um, uh, major groups doing the development, one in the UK, which is ourselves, and one in China. Now, interestingly, these two groups have used different theoretical models. Um, the UK group, my, my group, basically uses classic um, uh, electromagnetic theory and physics, um, the Chinese group have tended to rely on uh, uh, modelling, um, uh, three-dimensional um, uh, digital modelling of the, of the thrusters to derive the, um, the forces. But interestingly, the, the two uh, theoretical uh, approaches both give pretty well the same answer. So not only do the, the two different theories give the same answer, but two different sets of experiments also give the same answer. Um, the two the UK group, ourselves, we've done um, a num we've built a number of thrusters, um, uh, but the final um, flight thruster design um, uh, gives pretty much the same specific thrust as the Chinese um, uh, design. Um, so. Um, to most people, if you have two independent um, uh, groups doing um, uh, different work and coming up with the same answer, that is generally recognised as being um, a major step in the proof of any concept. Our work was originally funded in the UK by the government, um, <coughs> and uh, we then moved into a phase where we uh, worked on private investment. And the end product of all this work was what we call a first generation low thrust technology designed specifically for in orbit applications. Um, once the work has been pretty well um, agreed and, and established, um, we went through a process of transferring this work to the United States. And this was done um, with um, UK government agreement. It was a, um, an export license um, uh, approved by MOD. It um, was done under uh, what's called a TAA, um, <coughs> which is uh, granted by the State Department. Um, and uh, in fact, um, we actually transferred uh, all our um, design and test data uh, to Boeing. It's uh, noticeable that any subsequent programs uh, have not been acknowledged in the public domain. <clears throat> what we did um, in the UK was um, having basically completed the research and development on the first generation, fairly simple low thrust technology, we moved into um, uh, the really exciting area, which is um, uh, what we call the second generation technology, where we're using superconducting uh, cavities cooled by liquid gases. 
In fact, we built a, an experimental uh, device uh, cooled by liquid nitrogen um, and showed that uh, indeed uh, this would give the, um, uh, the theoretical levels that were necessary to, uh, to give us um, uh, the thrust levels that would could be applied uh, to um, launch vehicle and terrestrial applications. Okay, where does it come from? <clears throat> well, in fact, um, the original concept goes back almost 40 years now to the uh, depths of the Cold War, uh, when we were trying to solve very difficult missile guidance problems, um, uh, very important missile guidance problems, um, uh, for the strategic missiles, uh, and we were actually um, uh, encouraged to think the unthinkable. Uh, and it was during this sort of period, um, uh, which is, is, is probably not uh, encouraged too much these days, but um, we, we, um, we considered all sorts of uh, approaches to the problem, and in doing so the concept of um, something like M-Drive came up. Um, was agreed that this had um, uh, <coughs> possibilities, but um, uh, as always in, in these things, something else came along. Uh, it was actually uh, satellite navigation which solved the problem uh, uh, without having to resort to these um, uh, uh, rather wilder ideas. So it all got put away, and, um, and in fact, it didn't come up again until. Um, essentially probably about nine ten years later when I was working on, um, uh, on a military satellite called Skynet 4 <coughs> and uh, during the early de design phase of, of, of this satellite it um, occurred to me that um, uh, a, a military satellite could make great use of something like M-Drive Essentially, it gives you um, continuous uh, manoeuvring capability uh, using a propulsion system with no signature. Um, okay, so so th th this 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 was rather an exciting thought, um, and um, uh, when I moved into project managing of, of, of these satellites, it, it also became very clear to me that it would save an awful lot of money, <coughs> and would ideally be useful on. Um, uh, on commercial satellites as well. Um, at this point, um, the <coughs> commercial implications of, of this sort of technology uh, were not too impressive to the people I was working with, so we agreed to part company and I left uh, to develop um, M Drive in my own company. <laughs> uh, and SBR Limited has been up running now for about 12 years and in that period we've gone through a number of iterations uh, the main things that um, well, the main milestones I suppose have been an S-band demonstrator engine uh, a C-band flight thruster and uh, a second generation feasibility study um, and if you're looking at the slides you'll see um, uh, what is uh, uh, the C the S band demonstrator engine, the, the, the rather large looking device, sitting on a, a turntable. It's um, uh, one side uh, the, is the thruster, the other side is an instrumentation platform, and the whole thing is uh, sitting on a uh, frictionless bearing and a very large air bearing. Now, the total mass of that um, uh, turntable is, is about uh, 100 kilograms. Um, the objective of this was to demonstrate that we could indeed accelerate um, a 100 kilogram mass in effectively weightless conditions using uh, a reasonable uh, input power. Uh, this is what we did um, and uh, um, the test video has been on the internet now for, for a number of years. <coughs> the important thing is that this is um, a dynamic demonstration of M-Drive. Um, it shows that indeed that it does obey Newton's laws because it accelerates in the correct direction and it also uh, accelerates at a rate which is 
um, uh, directly um, compatible with the static thrust that had been measured previously. So, um, so Newton can breathe again, uh, even we agree with him, with our exotic M-Drive. How does it work? But essentially it is a resonant microwave cavity that has a truncated cone shape such that the guide velocity or group velocity, depending on how you wish to term it, is higher at one end than at the other end. And this is all straightforward microwave uh, physics. Um, as indeed is the fact that because the, um, uh, the group velocity is higher at one end than at the other end, means that you will get a higher force at one end than at the other end. <coughs> this is all sort of, uh, um, as I say, straight out of a physics or a microwave engineering textbook. There are, however, complications. Um, the relationship between the, um, uh, the, the wavelength of the, um, uh, of the propagated uh, wave and the diameter of the um, uh, cavity is very non-linear, um, which means that any attempt to try and understand this with mechanical analogies um, like uh, air pressure, um, it, it just fails. You, you do actually, unfortunately, have to understand the maths, and the maths is non-linear, and this, this does cause problems. And I, um, um, but uh, believe me, if you go through the maths, it, it, it works out correctly. What it does show is that you can design these things uh, carefully, such that you get a negligible axial component um, on the tapered walls. Um, and you can also show that um, the net force on the, um, that you get out of this cavity, um, which gives you the, the acceleration, um, is uh, dependent on what's called the Q of the cavity. Um, the Q of the cavity is a measure of the quality factor of the cavity. Um, <coughs> Every, every system has, a, has a, a quality factor. You hope that a mechanical structure like a bridge has one that's much lower than one, otherwise it would uh, tear itself apart in wind. Um, however, something like a microwave cavity can have a Q value of 50,000, which means that the, um, uh, the stored energy inside this cavity is very large and that the forces that are produced um, due to the, um, uh, the, the so-called radiation pressure uh, are also uh, significant. <clears throat> They're not large because um, uh, radiation pressure generally only produces very tiny force, but when you multiply them by the Q factor, um, then they become uh, useful. <clears throat> One of the other things that, um, uh, that has to be taken into account is that, that obviously to be a practical machine the uh, M-Drive has to uh, obey the conservation of energy. Um, now it does this because um, the forces um, are produced, if you like, by the stored energy inside the cavity. As you start to use up some of that stored energy in accelerating the cavity and thus producing kinetic energy, that stored energy will naturally go down. Um, the <clears throat> definition of Q is stored energy over energy loss per cycle. Therefore, the Q starts to go down, and therefore the thrust goes down. So it's a, a completely um, uh, sensible system uh, that does indeed um, uh, agree with the conservation of energy. <clears throat>